Hello ghosts and ghouls and welcome to another episode of Danica Raven's Bite Size Horror. This time we have a Japanese ghost story of A Promise Kept by Lafcado Hearn. I shall return in the early autumn, said Akada Samayon, several hundred years ago, when bidding goodbye to his brother by adoption, young Hesabe Salmon. The time was spring and the place was the village of Kato in the province of Harama. Akana was an Izumo samurai, and he wanted to visit his birthplace. Hasabi said, Your Izumo, the country of the eight cloud rising, is very distant. Perhaps it will, therefore, be difficult for you to promise to return here upon any particular day. But, if we were to know the exact day, we should feel happier. We could then prepare a feast of welcome, and we could watch at the gateway for your coming. Why... As for that, responded Akana, I have been so much accustomed to travel that I can usually tell beforehand how long it will take me to reach a place and I can safely promise you to be here upon a particular day. Suppose we say the day of the festival Kyoi. That is the ninth day of the ninth month, said Hesabi. Then the chrysanthemums will be in bloom and we can go together to look at them. How pleasant! So, you promised to come back on the ninth day of the ninth month? On the ninth day of the ninth month, repeated Akana, smiling farewell. Then he strode away from the village of Kato, in the province of Harima, and Hasabi Salmon, and the mother of Hasabi, looked after him with tears in their eyes. Neither the sun nor the moon, says an old Japanese proverb, ever halt upon their journey. Swiftly the months went by, and the autumn came, the season of chrysanthemums, and early upon the morning of the ninth day of the ninth month, Hisabi prepared to welcome his adopted brother. He made ready a feast of good things, bought wine, decorated the guest room, and filled the vases of the alcove with chrysanthemums of two colours. Then his mother, watching him, said, The province of Izumo, my son, is more than one hundred rai from this place, and the journey thence over the mountains is difficult and weary, and you cannot be sure that Akana will be able to come today. Would it not be better, before you take all this trouble, to wait for his coming? Nay, mother, Hisabi made answer. Akana promised to be here today. He could not break a promise. And if he were to see us beginning to make preparation after his arrival, he would know that we had doubted his word and we should be put to shame. The day was beautiful, the sky without a cloud, and the air so pure that the world seemed to be a thousand miles wider than usual. In the morning, many travellers passed through the village, some of them samurai, and Hisabi watched as each he came more than once imagining that he saw Akana approaching. But the temple bells sounded the hour of midday, and Akana did not appear. Through the afternoon also his abbey watched, and waited in vain. The sun set, and still there was no sign of Akana. Nevertheless, his abbey remained at the gate, gazing down the road. Later, his mother went to him and said, The mind of a man, my son, as our proverb declares, may change as quickly as the skies of autumn, but your chrysanthemum flowers will still be fresh tomorrow. Better now to sleep, and in the morning you can watch again for a canna, if you wish. Rest well, mother, returned to Sabi, but I still believe that he will come. Then the mother went to her own room, and Hasabi lingered at the gate. The night was pure as the day had been, all the sky throbbed with stars and the white river of heaven shimmered with unusual splendour. The village slept. The silence was broken only by the noise of a little brook and by the faraway barking of peasant dogs. Hasabi still waited, waited until he saw the thin moon sink behind the neighbouring hills. Then at last he began to doubt and to fear. Just as he was about to re-enter the house, he perceived in the distance a tall man approaching, very lightly and quickly, and in the next moment he recognised Akana. Oh, cried Hasabi, springing to meet him, I have been waiting for you from the morning until now. 
So you really did keep your promise after all. But you must be tired, poor brother. Come in. Everything is ready for you. He guided Akana to the place of honour in the guest room and hastened to trim the lights which were burning low. Mother, continued Asabi, felt a little tired this evening and she was already gone to bed, but I shall awaken her presently. Akana shook his head and made a little gesture of disapproval. As you will, brother, said Hasabi, and he set warm food and wine before the traveller. Akana did not touch the food or the wine, but remained motionless and silent for a short time. Then, speaking in a whisper, as if fearful of awakening the mother, he said, Now I must tell you how it happened that I came thus late. When I returned to Izumo, I found that the people had almost forgotten the kindness of our former ruler, the good Lord Enya, and were seeking the favour of the usurper Tunhitsa, who had possessed himself of the Koda castle. But I had come to visit my cousin, Akana Tanji, though he had accepted service under Tunhitsa and was living as a retainer within the castle grounds. He persuaded me to present myself before Tunitsa. I yielded, chiefly in order to observe the character of the new ruler, whose face I had never seen. He is a skilled soldier, and of great courage, but he is cunning and cruel. I found it necessary to let him know that I could never enter into his service. After I left his presence, he ordered my cousin to detain me, to keep me confined within the house. I protested that I had promised to return to Harima upon the ninth day of the ninth month, but I was refused permission to go. I then hoped to escape from the castle at night, but I was constantly watched, and until today I could find no way to fulfil my promise. Until today, exclaimed Hasabi in bewilderment, the castle is more than a hundred rai from here. Yes, returned Akana, and no living man can travel on foot a hundred rai in one day. But I felt that if I did not keep my promise, you could not think well of me, and I remembered the ancient proverb, Tama yoku ichi nichi ni si rai wo yuku. The soul of a man can journey a thousand rai in a day. Fortunately, I'd been allowed to keep my sword. Thus, only was I able to come to you. Be good to our mother. With these words, he stood up and in the same instant disappeared. Then Hasabi knew that Akana had killed himself in order to fulfil the promise. At earliest dawn, Hasabi Salmon set out for Castle Tunda in the province of Izumo, reaching Matsu, he there learned that on the night of the ninth day of the ninth month, Akana Soyamun had performed Harakiri in the house of Akana Tanji, in the grounds of the castle. Then Hasabi went to the house of Akana Tanji and reproached Akana Tanji for the treachery done and slew him in the midst of his family and escaped without hurt. And when the Lord Tuhitsa had heard the story, he gave commands that Hisabi should not be pursued, for although an unscrupulous and cruel man himself, Lord Chinitsa could respect the love of truth in others and could admire the friendship and the courage of Hisabi Salmon. That was Of a Promise Kept by Lafcano Hearn from the book Japanese Ghost Stories. I probably don't have many of the pronunciations right, but I just loved um, reading this book. If you would like to hear another Japanese story or perhaps a ghost story of another culture, I would be more than happy to take your recommendations. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe and send in your own suggestions.